so this might be the new way for creators to edit without using an SSD. Today we're going to be talking about the Ugreen DXP 480T Plus. A couple of videos ago, I talked about the Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus, and in that video, I covered a little bit about how you're able to use a NAS system to store all of your files, being able to send them to other people without using something like Google Drive, and how useful that was. I do have that actually right here, but the problem with that was that that was using hard drives, and you could speed it up a little bit if you want to use SATA drives, but we all know that editing off of those is not the fastest. And that's where this thing comes in. So this small little box, kind of the size of a Mac Mini, is Ugreen's attempt to be able to build a NAS system that is more focused on letting you edit off of it. The difference with this is that you're able to put the M.2 NVMe drives in it, and we all know that those are the fastest ones. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Ugreen, and because it is sponsored, I want to keep it as unbiased as possible. So this isn't going to be a review, this is more just going to be a showcase on what this thing can do. And maybe if you're looking for something like this, maybe this will actually be what you need. If you are interested in picking this up, I'll have links down in the description below for you to check out. Ugreen is offering 20% off for Amazon Prime Day, and they also have other discounts for other NAS units. Now, what makes this thing so good for editing? Like I mentioned, this uses M.2 NVMe drives, which are going to be way faster than SATA drives or hard drives. If you are looking for something for editing, you'll want to check out one of these and be looking for smaller but faster drives that you can put into this. But if you're looking for something for storage, you'll probably be looking at the DXP4800 Plus or something similar where you'd be able to put bigger drives but slower drives. Now that doesn't mean that you can't put big drives in here because the 480T you can actually fit up to 32 terabytes of space. They have four M.2 drives in there. It's very easy to disassemble. It's just two screws at the bottom. You open it, you can just slot your drives in there and you can put up to an eight terabyte M.2 drive in each. Ugreen has a huge compatibility list if you want to check it out, but most of the major big brands will be compatible with this. Now, if you're not sure what a NAS system is, I do highly recommend you check out the other Ugreen NAS video I made. I'll have a link down in the description below for you or I'll put it up here. But basically, instead of connecting the 40T to your computer using something like a USB-C port, you just connect it through Ethernet. You have one DC slot for power, you have two Thunderbolt ports, and you can actually use that to connect hard drives to it. You also have a USB-A port as well as HDMI, a headphone jack, and most importantly, the ethernet port. Now to connect to this, you're gonna connect your computer to your router with an ethernet cable, and then you can also connect the NAS system to your router with an ethernet port. And because this ethernet port supports up to 10 gigabits per second, you're gonna get really fast transfer speeds. Here's a little comparison showing you how fast it is to upload a 10 gigabyte file to the 4DT versus uploading a 10 gigabyte file to Google Drive. The great thing is the 4DT is also pretty small. It has a very nice aluminum body, so the build quality is very nice. You have fans to prevent it from overheating, and overall I think the build quality is pretty top notch. Once you install all of the drives and download the Ugreen app to be able to connect to the NAS, the setup process is very simple. It basically just walks you through all the steps and in just a few clicks you're ready to go. Now, I want to show you my workflow of how I'm using the 480T to edit off of it and then also talk about some of the benefits and features that you get with using one of these versus just editing off of an external SSD. So I'm going to go plug this in right now. Again, it's just the DC cable and the ethernet cable. You just plug it in. And because it is so small, I just have it right here under my monitor stand. Okay, so I just plugged it in and I wanna show you how I edit off of the 480T. So you can see on the left side here that I don't have any external hard drives connected. So to get to the 480T, you're gonna click on network and you can see here DXP 480T shows up right here. And you can also see DXP 4800 that I reviewed last time show up here as well. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. I already logged in, but if this is your first time, you're gonna have to log in. You click user folder, my name, and you can see working drive right here. And this is where I keep all of my files. Now, if we open something like DaVinci Resolve, you can see here I'm able to load all my projects. So for DaVinci Resolve, basically the workflow is that you want to keep your database on your computer, but then you want to keep all of your files on your NAS. And that's how you edit off of the NAS is by having the program on the computer. Now, if we go to something like Lightroom, it's basically the same thing. You want your Lightroom catalog on the computer, and then you want all of your files stored onto the NAS itself. I know a lot of people will be worried about how fast these speeds actually is and how good it actually is to be able to edit off of it. So this is a reel that I did yesterday, and you can see that if I'm scrubbing through the timeline, it's actually able to scrub through perfectly. There's no frame stutters at all. Now I was on proxy, so if I disable the proxies, I can actually still scrub through it, 
there's not that much lag at all. There is maybe just a little bit more lag, but honestly, the same thing was happening when I was editing off an external SSD. And I actually think that's a computer issue. And that's because I'm still using the M1 Pro MacBook. And I think that is actually what's bottlenecking this, not the NAS itself. If I quickly render this video, that's almost two minutes in length. You can see the top layer is getting about 60 to 100 frames of export speeds. And there we go, a minute and 40 clip rendered in 33 seconds. So that's pretty much in line with what an external SSD would be. If we open the Ugreen app, one of my favorite features and one of the things that I think is the most important, especially if you have two NAS systems, is this one called Sync and Backup. So basically what this is doing is syncing the 480T to the 4800 Plus. And this is important because I can edit off of the 480T, but when I'm done editing, it will back up everything to the 4800 Plus. But it also made it so that whenever you delete something off of the 480T, it does not delete it off of the 4800 Plus. This is an important distinction to make because I want to keep all the files I'm currently working on on the 480T, but when I'm done with it, I want to clear it off of the working drive because I don't have as much space. So I want to clear it off of the working drive because I probably don't need it anymore, but I still want a backup of it in case I ever need to go back to it. And that's where the distinction comes in where I can back up everything to the 4800 plus, I can delete it off of the 480T, I still have a backup whenever I need to go access that footage, but because it's on a slower drive, that doesn't matter too much to me. I'm only going to once in a while maybe access it, so I don't really care if it's on a slower drive, but I want to save the faster drive and save all that space for other projects that I'm working on. This backup is super nice because I don't ever have to remember to backup. Once you set up the sync and backup task, it will automatically do it for you. You'll never have to worry about backups because if you are working on something, you'll have a backup on the 480T as well as another backup that's synced in real time to the 4800 plus. This is one of my favorite features. So because the 480T is connected to the internet, you have this really cool function where you're able to share files with other people online. So this is actually come in super handy. Sometimes I'm shooting with other people like Jaden and we're shooting on multiple cameras. And sometimes I'll get a clip that he'll want by shot on my camera. And instead of having to remember to back it up or go to his house or he goes to mine and we swap cards and back up our files to each other, I can just take my cameras, upload all my footage onto the 480T and then send him a link. And he's able to download all of the footage that he needs directly off of my NAS. Now I know then you might be thinking, why don't you just use Google Drive or Dropbox? Google Drive and Dropbox are super expensive and I really hate paying for subscription services for storage with the 480T. It's just a one-time fee of buying the drive and buying the NAS and you don't have to worry about any subscriptions for it. The other thing, like I showed you in the beginning, is that Google Drive is also way, way slower compared to the 480T. And because the 480T, you're actually able to edit off of it, it's going to be super fast. And because it does have that 10 gigabit per second internet port, you're able to transfer footage very fast as well. So basically the 40T is like a combination of an external drive and Google Drive. It has fast M.2 drives, 10 gigabit per second speed so that you can edit off of it. So it's pretty fast like an external SSD, but you can also connect it to the internet to be able to send footage to other people, which makes it act like Google Drive and an external SSD all built in one. Now there's some other things I think are pretty cool, especially if you're a Mac user. So I don't actually know why this happens, but for some reason, whenever you have an external SSD or hard drive connected to your Mac and you just unplug it without ejecting it, most of the time it's probably fine, but at some point it kind of corrupts itself and the Mac isn't able to recognize it anymore. If this hasn't happened to you yet personally, then I think you're pretty lucky. If you search online, there's a ton of forums about people asking why it does that and that their Mac doesn't recognize their hard drive anymore. And this has happened to me a couple of times actually and happened to a few of my friends. And the only way to kind of reverse that is to format the drive, which of course, if you have working files on it, that's actually a big issue. With a NAS system, because it is just connected to the internet, it doesn't have to do any of that drive reading. It just reads off of the network. So you don't ever have to worry about accidentally unplugging it and corrupting anything. I could literally just unplug the ethernet cable right now and nothing will happen. One common issue that shows up when I first show people a NAS system is how do you access your files if the internet goes down? And this is the cool thing, because your internet is connected to the router and the NAS system is connected to the router, you don't actually need internet. Basically, the router connects the internet to let you access things like web service, but because the NAS and your computer is connected to the router, the router just kind of acts like a middleman between the computer and the NAS. And even if the internet is down, you're still able to access all of your files. Now, if you don't have ethernet, the good thing about the 480T is that you can actually connect it to your Wi-Fi. It will be a little bit slower. So if you're going to use it just 
based off Wi-Fi, you're probably not going to be able to edit off of it, at least not as fast as you might like. So I do highly recommend you connecting it through Ethernet. But on the worst case, if you want to bring it over to someone's house for whatever reason and just set it up there, you're able to just connect it to the Wi-Fi, which is really nice. Because the Wi-Fi will be a little bit slower, the 480T is smart enough to know that if it's connected to the Wi-Fi and it has an Ethernet cable attached, it will prioritize the Ethernet speeds over Wi-Fi. Because the NAS is connected to a router, it actually lets you access your files from a bunch of different devices in your house. So right now I'm currently editing off of my Mac, but I do have plans to get a Mac Studio in the future. And that means that I have two computers that I want to edit off of. Sometimes I might want to bring the computer downstairs in front of the TV and just sit on the couch and edit, but I have my Mac Studio up here in the studio just to edit off of it. And if I was working off of an external SSD, I would have to bring the drive with me back and forth just to edit off of it. But the good thing is because it's connected to the internet, any device connected to the router will be able to connect to the NAS and it'll be fast enough to edit off of it. One other useful feature is that you can actually use my phone to access the NAS even if I'm not on the same network and that's really useful. If you are a big Google Drive user, the 480T also has the ability to sync all of your data to Google Drive. Again, I'm not really sure why you'd use that because after getting a NAS system, I basically haven't touched Google Drive at all. But on the off chance that there is something you want to do with it, maybe you want to back up all of your files onto Google Drive and then reset it for whatever reason, you can do that. Now as filmmakers and content creators, one of the most important things that we need to do is share photos and videos. And something that I didn't think I would use that much but I actually have been using a lot is the AI search features in Ugreen. So when you click on photos, you're actually able to use AI to search all of your images that you have on your drive and be able to find specific photos that you want. This might be a keyword that AI is using to search specifically for in different photos, or they might actually be searching for that specific object. So in this case, I searched for camera. There are instances where the word camera shows up in specific pictures, but it's also using AI to try to recognize and look for cameras in other photos. Now there's a ton of other things that you can do with the NAS system, but the 480T has actually kind of transformed my workflow because I no longer need to use external hard drives or SSDs. Being able to work off of the NAS using something that's fast enough to be able to keep up with normal usage is super nice. And like I showed before, the speeds are actually really good, but combined with all the additional features, being able to send files to other people, not worrying about having to eject the SSD, being able to access all my files remotely has all come in handy. Again, if you're interested in checking this out, I'll have links down in the description below for you. You can is doing 20% off for Amazon Prime Day and other discounts for other units as well. So if you are looking for something like this, the 480T is definitely one that I think you should check out. And if you are interested in that backup system that I showed where you're editing off of the 480T, but it's able to real-time sync to another NAS to back up your files, I do recommend checking out the previous Ukraine video that I made on the DXP 4800 Plus, where that system is more focused on backup and just storing a lot of files. Again, like always, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more photo video content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.